We can illustrate this consumption function as a graph. The horizontal axis reflects the level of income, Y, and the vertical axis, consumption spending, C. Autonomous consumption, C bar, is that part of consumption spending that is independent of the level of income. We've seen that even if income's zero, some consumption spending still takes place. And this is why, in this graph, autonomous consumption spending starts at a point on the vertical axis above zero. A change in autonomous consumption spending changes this vertical intercept. For instance, an increase in household wealth, and note I say wealth, not income, perhaps because a good investment has paid off or an inheritance has come through, will cause that household to increase their autonomous spending pattern. This is indicated by a higher vertical intercept. Now, we know there's a positive relationship between income and consumption spending. As income increases, so does consumption spending. And this must mean an upward sloping curve. An increase in income, for instance, from Y1 to Y2 indicates that consumption spending increases from C1 to C2. But because the marginal propensity to consume is less than 1, the increase in consumption spending from C1 to C2 is smaller than the change from Y1 to Y2. The slope or angle of the curve is determined by the marginal propensity to consume. It's equal to the change in C divided by a change in Y. Now, if income rises by 100 and the resulting change in consumption spending is 75, the marginal propensity to consume is 75 divided by 100, which is 0.75. This means that for every one rand rise in income, consumption spending goes up by 75 cents, and 25 cents is saved. The value decides the slope of the line, Let's go through that again, this time with the following consumption function. Consumption spending C equals 100 plus 0.8 times Y. We must illustrate this as a consumption curve. First, we plot the axes, income Y on the horizontal and consumption spending C on the vertical. According to this consumption function, autonomous consumption C bar is equal to 100. So this is where we set our vertical intercept. Now we know that there's a positive relationship between changes in income and consumption spending. So we're going to have an upward sloping curve. An increase in income leads to an increase in consumption spending. The size of the increase in consumption spending is given by the marginal propensity to consume. It determines the slope of the consumption curve. And in this case, it's 0.8. So a one rand rise in income leads to an 80 cent increase change in consumption spending. So what happens to consumption spending if income increases by 200 from Y1 to Y2? Well, the increase in consumption spending is then 0.8 times 200, which is equal to 160. OK, now what if some of these values change? What happens if autonomous consumption changes from 100 to 120? Autonomous consumption spending is higher, and so the vertical intercept will be higher. At every income level, total consumption spending is now higher than before. This is indicated by an upward shift of the consumption spending curve by a value of 20. Now note that the slope hasn't changed. Our marginal propensity to consume is still the same as before. An increase in autonomous consumption spending therefore shifts the consumption curve upwards. And now, what if our marginal propensity to consume changes, say from 0.8 to 0.9? Well, a 100 rand rise in income now causes consumption spending to increase by 90 rand, not 80 rand. The slope of the consumption curve, determined by the increase in the marginal propensity to consume, now changes to reflect this higher percentage. The slope is now steeper, showing that for a given increase in income, the consumption spending rises more than it did before. It's important to remember the link between an increase in production, causing an increase in income, which in turn causes an increase in spending. We will see how any rise in consumer spending will lead to a further increase in production, then income, and therefore more spending. This is the amazing multiplier effect 
which has a central role to play in this whole economic model. If you want to know more about how households in South Africa spend their income, a useful source is the quarterly bulletin of the South African Reserve Bank, where consumption spending is subdivided 